Well, New Zealand's one of the most dynamic landscapes of anywhere in the world, and that's all thanks to plate tectonics and the plate tectonic boundary that runs right through the country that we live on. Um, Western Hawke's Bay is one of the best places in New Zealand to see what is perhaps some of the best dynamic geology in the world. So here we are at a place called the Fort, and from the top of this vantage point, we get a fantastic perspective of about 200 million years of New Zealand's geological history. So from one spot, we can see an incredible amount of stuff about the evolution of, of New Zealand, of the landscape that we can see today. One of the really obvious features that we can see in the landscape from this vantage point is the change from relatively flat land with a few minor hills into it to a series of mountain ranges over in this direction here. So it's a very, very abrupt change in the type of landscape that we have. And the reason for this change here is the fact that we have a very, very active fault running right through here. We have the Mohawk Fault. In effect, it's a continuation of the Wellington Fault, which runs right through Wellington City. It comes right up through here in Western Hawke's Bay and carries on through the axial ranges all the way up to Whakatane. So it's a really, really big feature in the New Zealand geological scene. And it's also a very big feature in that it's produced large scale landscape features that we can see. Although the fault looks really quite spectacular down here on the ground, when you actually move up into the air and, and fly over the landscape, it looks absolutely spectacular. It's as though a giant's got a great big knife and has just sliced right down through the landscape just forming this really abrupt change from the quite flat landscape to the relatively hilly mountainous topography behind us. So one effect of having the Mohawk Fault through here is that we have lots of uplift. And here we are standing mostly in sunshine here, but only just behind us we have rainfall starting to form on the mountains. And this is a really great example of the dynamic situation we have in New Zealand. We have rapidly rising mountain ranges, we have lots of rain in New Zealand, these forces combine to actually give us lots of erosion. Erosion produces lots of sediment and all of the sediment has to go somewhere. And over in this direction we can see one of the largest rivers in the Hawke's Bay, the Nauroroa River, flowing its way to the coast. Um, it's a large braided river, contains lots of sediment, large clasts of, of grey wacky derived from erosion in the mountain ranges, and it has an incredible bed load of sediment as it flows its way to the sea. That's the modern river. But what we can also see behind it is a series of older river deposits, alluvial terraces. Now a combination of erosion and uplift has preserved this flight of terraces for us to see. So as the landscape has risen up, the river has gone and cut its course continuously further and further down and the old river deposits get preserved as these flat top hills that are so brilliantly exposed around here. So we know that the older terraces are the ones higher in the landscape and as we move lower and lower and closer to the modern riverbed, the terraces get younger and younger until we reach the modern river. Now sometimes picking up these really big faults can be sort of fairly tricky. Although we know that they're there, they can be quite hard to recognise at times in the landscape. But in the case here, the Mohaka fault is really quite simple to, to identify. On the left hand side here, we have sort of a, a lighty white, blue, grey coloured rock. And that's young ply Pleistocene mudstones. On the right hand side we have grey wacky, so the basement rocks that form the geological foundation of much of New Zealand. And we can see that there's a really sharp change from white grey rock to dark grey rock. And that change is where the Mohaka Fault comes through. So across the fault we have a really abrupt change from young rock to very old rock. And the way that we get that relationship is because of uplift. So uplift of the of the old basement rocks relative to the relatively young um, marine sedimentary rocks. One other interesting feature is that there's a very large gorge that flows between the main uh, yellow broom covered hills in the distance and um, some of the grey wacky just in front of us here. So it's very very difficult obviously for a river to tunnel its way through a mountain range. So this is an example of what we call an antecedent river gorge. In the case here the river was previously flowing across the landscape. We've had uplift on the Mohaka Fault and as the Grey Wacky has been uplifted the river has cut its course down and down and down and deeper and deeper giving the gorge. When the Mohaka Fault moves not only does it move up it also moves side to side. In this case the rocks on my right hand side are moving towards us and the rocks on my left hand side are moving away from us. And we can see that in many places along the Mohaka Fault here in Hawke's Bay. By the way streams are off, um, set across the fault. So a stream would have flowed across the fault prior to an earthquake, it 
the beds have been pulled apart as the faults move side to side and we can actually see offsets and streams across the fault and we can use that as a tool to measure the amount of offset that's likely to occur during future earthquakes. So you can also see um, in this part of the fault that we actually have a ridge that did cross the fault but it's been pulled apart by what we call strike slip offset. So we have an example here of a relatively flat mountain top um, with what we call concordant summit heights. So we mean that the heights of the mountain are much the same all the way over it. It doesn't sort of have the great big jagged peaks that you see in some of the South Island mountains. It's a relatively flat uh, mountain top through here. So multiple phases of, of erosion under the seafloor have produced the surface that we see behind us. Now we know that it was under the ocean because in a few places up around the mountain ranges here, even all the way up near the summit of these mountains, we can find remnants of marine rocks. We can find limestones. And the youngest limestone that we find up on top of the Ruahine Range is about 2.4 million years ago. So it sits right on top of this flat surface. So what we can say was that at least 2.4 million years ago, there was no Ruahine Range in this area. It was actually under the ocean. And since 2.4 million years ago, the mountains have been uplifted. Uh, to the north of where we're standing, we can see a surface that's relatively flat in terms of the actual, the, the actual paddocks, but the surface is tilted, it's not flat lying. Sedimentary rocks are generally laid down flat, they're laid down horizontal. So the fact that we can see that these rocks are actually tilting in the landscape, or have been tilted, we can say that they were once laid flat on the sea floor, but some force has actually tilted them so that they dip the way that they do through the landscape. So we attribute this tilting in the landscape to uplift on the major faults that run through this part of Western North Island. So this is the rock that's been sitting underneath our feet up here at the fort here at Fauna Fauna. And it's an example of a rock top that we call a limestone. This rock is made up of smashed up fragments of little marine animals, things like clams and marine snails and bryozoans, a whole plethora of different types of animals. We can see that it wasn't all laid down in, in just one deposit. We can see really nicely layering within the rocks. So discrete events, separate events, have deposited these layers of broken up shell material. And over thousands and thousands and thousands of years, these layers of smashed up shells build up to give us the limestone. It's the remains of the animals themselves that actually cement this rock together. So the shell fragments are able to dissolve and then they re-precipitate, effectively cementing the rock. So this rock is only 2.4 million years old. It's sitting at something like 700 metres above sea level and it's pretty hard. All this happening is just really good evidence of a really dynamic landscape in this part of New Zealand.